At their Johannesburg head office, the company says that 5G is about 100 times better than 4G in terms of data transmission and could connect more people to internet at less cost. And that's generational stuff on, on your uh, computer usages, I mean your mobile usages. Yeah, it? this is so 4G, exciting. So, so it means a whole breakthrough, but the problem is how uh, quickly can it be uh, disseminated across the country? MTN says that for 5G to be rolled out uh, there would need to be even bigger uh, megahertz blocks uh, spectrum a bit complicated uh, but then much more is needed than 4g and remember that even the digital television migration is holding up the allocation of spectrum to uh, the cell phone companies to use well Gloria Safako Musi caught up with MTM's uh, chief technology and information officer to find out more 5G is not just a new standard, it's really a new technology that is coming to the mobile. So if you compare 5G with 4G, 5G means uh, uh, 100 times the speed that today can be achieved through 4G. So if we are talking with 4G about uh, 10 or 100 megabit per second. With 5G, we scale up uh, to orders of magnitude. So we are talking about 10, 20 gigabit per second, which uh, exactly we were able to demonstrate during the trial. And this is uh, helping to open new scenarios. So for example, if you think about the last mile access, we can foresee that in the future, we will not need any more fiber optics to the home or to the building and we can replace it entirely with, with 5G. 5G means uh, more capacity available, so opportunity to scale up in terms of, of data transmission, which means uh, benefit for customers in order to access even more the internet, uh, potentially with cheaper cost. Uh, there is a big if in this uh, element, uh, which means uh, spectrum has to be available. And by the way, spectrum has to be available in bigger blocks uh, compared to the 4G. What about the issue of spectrum for 5G? As it is, there are serious issues with uh, 4G spectrum. In reality, let me say, in order to, for example, to have the, the trial, we asked uh, permission uh, to ICASA, and ICASA temporarily uh, gave us access to a significant block, 800 megahertz, in 15 gigahertz, which is a band that is not uh, uh, heavily used today. So when you look at Spectrum for 5G, uh, you look mostly at three different uh, uh, bandwidths. The first one is below one gig, which is ve already very busy now because there is 2G, 3G, uh, and, and, and potentially 4G in that band. Uh, if you want to be very pervasive on 5G, you need also spectrum there. There is a, then a second layer which is between 1 uh, gigahertz and 6 gigahertz, uh, which is a little bit uh, less busy, especially in the highest part of, of the spectrum. Uh, and probably looking at the first rollout uh, in terms of uh, uh, massive rollout of 5G is especially 3.5 gigahertz, uh, the, main, uh, the main band. Uh, for example, in Europe uh, is, is like that, but also we see in the in, in, in US. Um, and then there is above 6 gigahertz, where probably you need to allocate hundreds of megahertz uh, if you really want to operate with a very high throughput. So I, I think, uh, as you know, the situation is quite difficult in, in South Africa. In reality, today operators uh, are operating with 2G, 3G and 4G technology in an allocation of spectrum that for many other countries is typical just for 2G and 3G. So there is already, uh, let me say, a significant constraint. Um, 5G is bringing the discussion to, to even a more stressful uh, situation in which you have four technologies competing potentially for, for the same spectrum and so it's really needed a, a, an intervention from a regulation perspective in order to, to enable it. Tell us more about this 5G, uh, what it means, what the difference is uh, with 4G and what, what its capabilities are. So I think in reality, there is always a natural evolution of the technology, yeah? And the evolution of the technology is coming uh, at the same time with the evolution of the needs from the customers. So 
uh, you cannot lag behind yeah because vice versa if you are doing that uh, very soon uh, you will be not anymore a uh, capable to provide the new services to the customers so a uh, stream of, of innovation is really important uh, in any technological roadmap and we think on top of that that by the way innovation in africa is also a big theme for the entire mtn group so we want to pursue this and i think south africa is the best place to start uh, this innovation what would you say is the cost to the mobile operators and, and the South African economy of the, the lack of capacity in terms of spectrum? So if you have no spectrum, uh, the only other option is to over-densify the network, which is anti-economical. So it, it's really becoming difficult then to think about that uh, uh, from, uh, let me say, pure business case perspective. Yeah? It's, it's becoming more and more difficult to justify the cost of a new site uh, just for capacity reasons when vice versa you could just add some hardware to an existing site uh, and enable a new block in terms uh, of, of spectrum yeah and there is an order of magnitude of difference between the two approaches so that's the reason why uh, it's preferable to avoid over-densification, but vice versa to use additional spectrum. Say um, MTN succeeds in, in this pilot and um, it gets spectrum and then you run out of 5G. What would be the impact on, on data costs? Data costs are quite a big yeah, it's, it's still, it's still uh, very early to, to, to understand. As you have seen, our live trial has a very small scale so far. So in order to prove what is the real cost to, to roll out the technology, we need more validation points. Um, it's also clear that the standards in 5G are still uh, under definition. So there is still work from the international bodies uh, to fully define the standards uh, on, on 5G. And on top of that, it was also evident uh, in, in our live trial that uh, the devices uh, and the ecosystem of devices is not yet ready. So the chipset producers are starting now to produce chipsets uh, uh, um, with the 5G standard, uh, which means that probably by the end of 2018 we will have the first uh, chipsets. And then there is probably another 6 to 12 months before having the device producers uh, embedding those chipsets in their, in their devices which is bringing us to the late 2019 uh, as the first moment in which we could have, uh, let me say, the usual devices in terms of size, in terms of battery consumption. And then the other question is also, what is the cost of those devices? So is it reasonable to think about uh, a launch of, of 5G just for South Africa around 2020? All right, so MTN explaining uh, they're testing 5G, but it'll be a while before you can actually see that on your uh, phone and realize the benefits. Let's look at this now. Fashion group H&M has apologized for an advert featuring a black child that has been slammed as racist. The child.